Logic rolls the dice, int uh, raises an interesting question in the comments section of my previous video, where he points to the distinction um, between fulfillment or non-fulfillment of desire uh, versus the objects of desire in and of themselves. In other words, if I want something, um, one could say that I don't really want it. What I want is to have my want slaked or quenched or fulfilled or whatever. And what I don't want is the feeling of deprivation from not having that which I desire. You know, all right. Um, you know, the issue of needs versus wants is raised there, I guess. Kind of uh, reminds me of the Bob Dylan song, uh, Memphis Blues, I think, uh, where he says, your debutante has, you, has what you need, baby, but I know what you want. You know, the classic case of the woman who will actually fulfill you versus the femme fatale. And, of course, this being Bob Dylan, he implies that we want the femme fatale. We want what we want, not what we need. Now, <clears throat> deprivation and fulfillment. Okay, in, a, in both cases, you're trying to satisfy desire. You're trying to satisfy something that wants something. Now, we either satisfy that desire, we live with its deprivation, or we deal with the phenomenon of desire, of attraction and aversion, per se. Um, we deal, see, logic rolls the dice raises the point of, it's not, say, in economic terms, it's not the actual hamburger what I want. The, it, what I want is not the actual hamburger. What I want is the satisfaction that I will get from owning and consuming that hamburger. Um, so we just sort of say, all right, there's a desire machine out there. And the only thing to do is to satisfy it or to deprive it. Um, are we perhaps feeding that desire thingy, which I hesitate to really call a desire mechanism because that implies some sort of teleology. Um, but, <clears throat> and I took exception to that term before, now I'm using it. Um, but I'm using it sort of as a illustration of the way that I think logic rolls the dice is framing desire itself. Um, is there a way to permanently provide satisfaction for whatever desires exist out there and put, if we want to call it a desire mechanism, but again, I think that's something of a misnomer, but let's call it that. If we want to put our desire mechanism in a state of more or less irreversible fulfillment so that there is nothing more to desire or to fear or to be averse to, uh, in other words, you know, the desire mechanism, if it's onerous, means that we want the femme fatale. Is there a medical, me, medical, metaphysical or philosophical equivalent of the debutante in Bob Dylan's song? Um, the woman that you need, not the woman that you want. Um, and even need is not necessarily what I'm getting at here. Um, what I mean is what would place desire in a, an irreversible and ongoing state of fulfillment. Sounds like religion, doesn't it? <laughs> it always does when you start talking this way, because that's how religious people say. We can satisfy your wants permanently. Follow our designs and you'll be permanently satisfied. Um, <clears throat> I'm not really sure that there is a difference between a want and a need because I don't think that there's anything that ultimately that we actually need. And I don't think that there's anything that we actually want either. I tend to agree a bit with 
logic rolls the dice. What we're looking for is the satisfaction or um, we want to avoid the sense of non-satisfaction. Um, how do we get there? <laughs> uh, I know what his answer is. We simply stop having babies and <laughs> that's going to take care of all that. I find that a completely inadequate response to something as gigantic as desire in and of itself. Um, and I think that what we're, I think that what we need is, or what if, if we're going to pursue that line of thinking, we've got to sort of back up a bit and try and understand what need and aversion and desire actually are. Um, we desire something. So you think that the something is the issue. No, the something is the desire, right? Okay, now how do we deal with that desire? It desires things, but ultimately it desires. Um, so maybe it doesn't, the, the will, the desire mechanism, whatever you want to call it, wants. We might as well forget about the things that it wants, because whenever you want something and you get that thing, suddenly you want something else. Okay. So the problem isn't deprivation as such, because we know that fulfillment of desire will simply result in, I guess, you know, or it looks as though it will result in a feeling of jadedness and more desire, which we then fulfill and get another desire, etc., etc. But then, <laughs> this desire and... Um, or this want and desire of non-deprivation becomes something of a trap, doesn't it? Because if we don't get what we want, then we feel thwarted and we feel like we have been deprived, and yet if we do get what we want, we feel empty. <laughs> Double whammy, I guess, or checkmate, or something like that. However, is there perhaps a way to, instead of treating desire as an eternally, I don't know, randy and hungry wild beast, is there any way to tame it, to calm it down, to make sure that it doesn't feel deprived, um, <clears throat> to make sure that desire doesn't ever get to the point where there is a deprivation or there is even a desire for anything else. In other words, desire itself has been satisfied not by providing the thing that we think desire, sat, uh, uh, desire desires. <laughs> In other words, we don't, we, instead of feeding the lion another hamburger, we deal with the fact that the beast, the lion, feels hunger. Again, I think that the kind of some of the logic is sound in, in that, okay, that which exists desires. So if we don't exist, we don't desire. Therefore, there's no, nothing to fear or feel deprived of. Uh, and we don't, as a sort of a side effect of that, we don't want anything either. Okay. But we want being, don't we? <laughs> we want to exist. Um, how do you satisfy desire or one shouldn't even say satisfy. How do you meet desire while at the same time continuing to exist? Now, you can say that that's impossible. Yeah, you can say that. <laughs> that's nice. <laughs> I can say all kinds of things. 